five yard line. Craig, a plan B acquisition from Seattle. So the Chiefs gained, let's see, five years of youth at a position previously occupied by Steve DeBerg, who moved on to Tampa Bay. And now Harvey Williams, as you mentioned, Bill, for the cheap jump effect, is in the backfield for the first time. First round draft pick last season, Harvey Williams, who has shown flashes. The fake to Williams, and the pass dropped by Kimball Anders, covered by Mo Lewis. Well, you see the play, uh, Chiefs play selection, and second down is the big thing there. Pete Carroll told us yesterday that 80% of the time, regardless of the yardage, that, you, that the Chiefs' tendency has shown that they're going to run the ball. And uh, well, they got a second and 10 here. And in most cases like this, they'll try to reduce the third down yards down to about three or four if they're able to. Willie Davis now at the bottom of your screen flank to the left side. Craig to throw on second down. Ball knocked out of his hands. And it appears that the Chiefs have recovered. Looked to be the center, Tim Grunhardt. Dave Craig with coming into today 112 fumbles lifetime. <laughs> well, that's been the thing that has uh, plagued Dave Craig throughout his career. You know, back in the pocket, getting stripped. You know, it looked like he just dropped that ball out of there. And if I was Kansas, uh, the Jet, uh, Kansas City, I'd be a little worried about my pass protection right now because the last three or four passes that uh, they've thrown, the Jets have had good pressure. We have a couple of Jets on the field here. Some kind of collision took place on that pass rush. It's Dennis Bird and Scott Mercero who are down. The 113th fumble for Craig. That's an NFL record, incidentally, but he was able to recover. The higher you go. Well, here's the pass rush on the last play on the left side of the screen. Scott Mercero, number 94, Whoa. and Dennis Bird, his teammate, both after Craig, who steps up at the last minute, and they just sandwich each other. Now, Mercero's on his feet, but Bird, number 90, is still down. You see Mercero there on the sideline, and he looks like he took the worst of it, but apparently Bird, who has had a problem with the shoulder early in the season, is going to have to be taken off on the uh, stretcher. Dennis Burr making it back from a separated shoulder that he suffered earlier in the year. And he will need some help. Well, this collision was just a vicious collision. Both guys going full speed. And, and, and it looks like Bird, you know, hits Mercero in a more vulnerable in the solar plex area. But he hit him with that shoulder. And maybe that's what... Got Bird down there, he either pinched the nerve or a shoulder. Again, I'm not being a doctor up here, but when you've seen a lot of collisions like this, sometimes when you witness it, you can kind of predict what happened, and it looked like Bird might have either pinched his nerve in his neck or, or uh, re-injured that shoulder. Dennis Bird, a player who made the move from defensive tackle. The Jets hoping to take advantage of his speed. He was getting pushed around in the middle. And they moved him to the left defensive end. And now they're trying to help uh, Bird up. And they'll put him on the cart and take him back to the dressing room. A reminder tonight, an evening packed with action and suspense, starting on the two field goals by Nick Lowry. And just a moment ago, as the Jets combined, Coming up with the fourth sack of the day of Dave Craig, Dennis Byrne and Scott Mercero were involved in a collision. And there's head coach Bruce Coslett checking out. Dennis Byrne is still down. Scott Mercero back at the bench. For the Jets, this a melancholy week, which was prompted by the retirement of one of their all-time receivers. Here you see Ken O'Brien connecting with Al Toon, who was advised by doctors to call it quits after he suffered a concussion for the ninth time in his eight-year career. 
Altoon with 517 lifetime receptions over 6,600 yards. And this is the scene at the jet camp this past Friday when the retirement was announced. I spent a lot of time with these guys and I miss them. I miss them a lot. I'll be here, I'll be supporting them. Didn't think I'd cry, but it's really been a, part, a big part of my life. An emotional moment this past Friday, Altoon told by medical people, another blow to the head and he risked permanent brain damage, so he wisely opted for a retirement and he will be remembered as one of the best players in New York Jets uh, history. And uh, now some uh, difficult moments for Dennis Bird and the Jets and they are being very careful in terms of moving Bird. This is always the difficult part of it because we are not going to guess as to what is wrong with with Bird, but uh, the key here is in the movement of the player. Well, the doctors are always, uh, you know, taking every precaution now until they can get them to the dressing room. They want to be, be careful that they, they don't move the wrong part, and, you know, they're talking to him down there, and they're trying to, to make sure that he, they get him on the stretcher and as relaxed a, a posture as possible, and you see the other players uh, around looking concerned, but a lot of this is uh, very precautionary on the part of the doctor. And it's amazing that uh, Scott Mercer, who, as you mentioned, appeared to be, out of the two, the player who was most severely hurt, looks to be okay over on the sideline. Well, Bird's helmet right into Mercero's shoulder pads there, and, you know, you see they're both uh, stunned pretty good, but Mercero's able to shake it off and now they have bird on the uh the golf cart so to speak and they'll keep him in a stationary position until they get him in the dressing room and can can take a real good look at him and we will pass on a report as, as soon as it comes across as to the status of dennis bird in his fourth nfl season out of tulsa First, he will be taken back to the dressing room. They will check him out in the training area. The Jet medical staff will uh, take a long look at Dennis Bird, and as I said, we'll pass on a report as, uh, as soon as it uh, comes up to this area. As for the game, only 23 seconds have gone by in this third quarter. The Chiefs with a 6-0 lead on the Jets. And when we resume, it will be a third down and 17 for Kansas City at their 18-yard line. And in this case, Kansas City's figuring, hey, we might as well lay it up. It's as good as a punt if it's intercepted. But they get it to Davis, who has outstanding speed and who's in for a very high uh, reception average per catch this year. And they hit him with a big play. And that may well be the play that gets Kansas City going here today. It's a first down of the 27 cash in motion. Here's Harvey Williams coming back to Willie Davis. He had a strong season with Orlando in the World League, and that experience helped him. Uh, he was a practice player back in 90 and 91. Considered to be a first-year man out of Central Arkansas. Now, Bill Central Arkansas, best-known sports alum, was in town only yesterday. Would that be Scotty Pippen? Very good. 
Very good. Well, it was third and 17. The Jets were in a three-deep zone, and there's no excuse for getting beat deep in that down and distance situation. That's just poor concentration. Second and seven at the 24. Williams is stopped. Stopped at the line by the combination of Kyle Clifton and Mo Lewis. Harvey Williams broke out against the Redskins two weeks ago. Picked up 88 yards on 19 carries, filling in for the injured Barry Word. Well, I keep going back to that, that pass play on third and 17 because I'm really stunned by that type of thing, and it's the kind of play that just drives a coach crazy. Instead of having the, the Kansas City backed up, forcing them to punt, and taking over on the 50-yard line, now you're trying to keep them from scoring with one concentration lapse. It's a third and seven from the 24. Bray throws the middle. Willie Davis on the reception, stopped by Young. And Hasty, the early report from the Jet locker room is that Dennis Bird suffered a back injury and no further report. I'm wondering, and it was a terrific call because it worked, the call made by Marty Schottenheimer, if he felt, well, the Jets might be a little off balance, uh, feeling down after watching uh, one of their key players, Dennis Bird, being taken off the field. Element of shock to make that call? I don't think so. I think it's just a good a good way to lay the ball up it's a low risk pass you're throwing it to the outside you throw it extremely deep and even if it's intercepted it's the same as you know a punt now the injured jet the center uh tim grunhard is uh being helped off the field by the kansas city trainers right there this guy's been kind of the mainstay they look like they're looking at his uh, either foot or the tibia area. Tim Grunhard, one of the best young centers in the NFL, third year out of Notre Dame, second round pick of the Chiefs back in 1990. For the most part, played the guard position for the Fighting Irish, and he is being helped off the field. Well, here's that, back to that third down play. You see Dave Craig, he has his mind made up, just going to Davis all the way just lays it all the way out there and you know Davis is just able to outrun Dennis Price number 20 there for the Jets and you know there's as I said there's just absolutely no excuse for getting beat deep on third and 17 you make them throw the ball in front of you and and tackle them uh, and force the team to punt and it's just a concentration lapse and those are the kind of plays that cost you the game. And Kansas City did pick up the uh, first down. That is Connie Kawahi, who has just checked in at center, replacing Tim Grunhardt, ten-year man of, out of Hawaii, who is noted for his deep snapping. Here's Craig off the play action. So Tim Barnett has another Chiefs first down, setting first and goal, and again a flare-up. That's Paul Freese of the Jets involved, along with Jonathan Hayes of the Chiefs. Those are the principals. Well, we had a couple of those right near the end of the first half, and, you know, the game's heating up, and a couple of players have been carried off the field here, and, and uh, the aggressiveness and the tempo of this game and the key time of the game is at hand, and Kansas City realizes it, and the Jets realize it, and, and that's why the game's hit, uh, heating up here. And There's Hayes coming in there and taking a couple pokes at Mario Johnson, number 78. Eligible to this, number 68.